Good morning, everyone. I am Dr. Ashima Sharma. I am the Professor and Head of Emergency Medicine at Nizam Institute of Medical Sciences, Hyderabad. So today, friends, we will discuss the most important acute medical emergency, snake bite. Snake bite is important because it is preventable, it is treatable, and it unnecessary has causing a lot of morbidity and mortality in this country despite that there are national guidelines from years. So what we have to discuss today, what I plan to discuss with you all today, what are the do's and don'ts at a clinic practice. So let us uh, start with first understanding the problem. So India we are subtropical or you can say almost a tropical country especially the states of Andhra Pradesh, um, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, West Bengal, those which have good amount of rainfall as well as a humid climate, a lot of forest area. There is, an, uh, uh, there is always opportunities of snake bites and a maximum number of snake bites as per the national registry occurs in these states. Do all the snake bite patients reach hospital? No. Still, as of today also, only 20% of snake bite patients reach to hospital for their treatment. Rest all, where are the rest 80% going? Well, they must be going to some traditional healer and or they must not be alive to reach to a hospital. So it is our, as a doctor, it is our responsibility to ensure that we do the correct interventions at every level so that the patient, a victim of snake bite, reaches to hospital alive for further treatment. So first, I'll talk to you about the FAB4. Why I call them FAB4? Because they are, these are the four snakes which are poisonous, venomous, and are present in our country. So number one, let's say cobra. Number two, crate. Number three, viper. And number four is also a viper but it is a soft scale viper. The third one was a rustal viper. Let us talk about what can you do if you are available within a 30 minutes reach of a victim to your place. I mean to say primary health center available within 30 minutes of reach of the victim or you have a small clinic establishment just within the 30 minutes ride for a patient. So first of all, as a doctor, you have to reassure your patient. 70% of bites are non-venomous. Number two, we have to look out for the signs of sympathetic stimulation. That is why the patient is anxious. I can understand that you can question me that tachycardia, tachypnea, all this can happen if the patient is having a real bite also, a venomous bite also. So what distinguishes this from a non-venomous bite and just a sympathetic stimulation? Presence of cold extremities. We all have heard, isn't it, that when you are worried, your hands go cold. So cold extremities is one trick which we one should use to understand that this bite can be non-venomous. Well, it is not 100% sensitive. Now next is, if it is not 100% sensitive, then what else can tell you? Hmm. You look out for the swelling at the site of bite. Sometimes it is just a local swelling, but it has to be bred, it, and the systemic envenomation will have a swelling which is progressively increasing. Sometimes this local swelling can also be because of the ligature, a tunique which the people around the victim have tied on him while they were bringing him. Well, this is not a good practice. You have to ensure that it is removed. Now, will I remove once it is tied and patient is brought to me? Though, though being a doctor, I understand the presence of ligatures, tunicates, they will all cause to gangrene, ischemia of the muscles and will cause to gangrene. But if, if there are multiple ligatures or multiple tunicates, I would probably remove the distal ones, but keep the proximal ones. But if one is already, they have been kept. I'll remove the distal one only when my ASV and, uh, is in, is about to go in. And also, uh, the patient reaches to a place where the doctor has the facility of intensive care uh, monitoring. Please put up an IV cannula. Ensure your patient gets some amount of fluid. By some amount of fluid, I mean 
If the patient is um, hypotensive, obviously you will be checking the vitals of the patient. If the patient has shows low blood pressures as per his age and more or less than 100 millimeters systolic blood pressure for an adult male or a female, start giving him normal saline. Or a ringer lactate, both are equally effective. There is no fluid better than the other fluid. Check out for blood glucose. Though it is not that these patients should be hypoglycemic or hyperglycemic secondary to any snake bite, but yet it may be possible that there might be something related to their underlying comorbid condition which can deteriorate in the presence of a venomous snake bite. The other thing which you have to do is to not allow them to take anything nearby, uh, orally till they are reaching to a medical establishment. Nil by mouth is one thing which you have to ensure the patient is told about. The other thing is that we have to talk, you have to talk to the attendants. The traditional remedies will not work in this. Uh, there is no proven benefit, no proven benefit of traditional remedies, be it tattooing, be it cryo, be it application of pottery, be it some herbs massaged into that area. Nothing, nothing works. Nothing works. I sit at a tertiary care center. I know that there are some, sometimes we get snake bites which have received ASV locally. I mean to say that the doctor had some one or two vials and he understood that, okay, let me give it at the site of snake bite, the innovation site, the fang site. It will increase the edema. It can lead to compartment syndrome. So there is no, no evidence, absolutely no evidence of giving ASV locally. How would you further shift them? That is very important. If I have a time, I will definitely look for fang bites and try to, you know, uh, circle it or now we are into the mobile technology uh, world so I'll take a photograph and uh, give it on the attendance uh, phone so that they can show it at, at the other hospital. Number two, I will make sure that I immobilize this limb or if it is a hand using a simple wooden stick. All you have to use a crepe bandage, all you have to immobilize. It is very essential. Again, I am saying it is very, very essential that you do it loosely. Loosely enough to that your one of your finger is can be inserted between the crepe bandage and the limb because there is high chances of patient having a compartment syndrome. Because see, sometimes the bite marks are not very visible. So it is also also uh, good to use a magnifying glass because crate they have very thin pants. Okay, so but with a magnifying lens, it is seen with some redness around that. So that would also help the doctor and not make him understand, you know, the more you go to a tertiary care center, the more the diagnosis of strokes and GBS would be thought of first. That is normal. So if you can, you know, look out at your level, a lot of confusion is stopped and the patient gets the right ASV within no time. Now, how would I transfer this patient? It is always good to transfer the patient by ambulance in rural areas, in rough terrains, especially the mountain areas. Motorbike ambulances are available by government by 108 these days. Well, motorbike ambulances are acceptable provided a person sits, uh, the victim sits between two people. The person who sits behind him should be holding his head and neck because neuroparalytic uh, snake bite, the head will suddenly flop the moment the paralysis in, ensues. The motorbike ambulances, the normal ambulances, 108 ambulances available from the private hospitals, everything is fine. The only other thing which a doctor at that level should ensure is that remove all the chains, jewelry, some rings, anything which, can, which has a potential to cause a ligature around. The only thing I have told you not to remove is the most proximal tunique, which if it has already been tied, that don't remove that most proximal one, but rest all of them remove. But don't tie it. If it is not there, that is good enough. Just do the crepe bandage with a wooden scale, and I'm sure your patient could be safely transferred. Well, you may question me that do I give ASV at my center if I have the facility? Yes, sir. If you have the facility of giving early initiation of ASV, ASV, you should do. But only, only if you know that 
this is a venomous snake which has bitten the patient. Just on the thought process that this can be snake bite, we are not supposed to use ASV as per, per our existing national guidelines. Going ahead, I would say that the most important part of uh, once the patient reaches the hospital would be um, to recognize the four clinical presentations of the snake bite. So first of all, a venomous presentation can be a progressive painful swelling, which is for most, most probably by the bite of viper. Second is a vasculotoxic, V for vasculotoxic, V for viper. They, they can be both the vipers, it can be russels, it can be uh, soft scale viper. Then comes the neuroparalytic presentation, wherein a lot is needed in from critical care um, doctors to help the patient. Now, this neuroparalytic and the fourth is myotoxic. So, myotoxic is sea snake or the sea snake um, uh, and myotoxic presentations are most commonly seen in the fishers or those people who live in the coastal areas. So, this is also one of the way of understanding um, by the locality that which snake would be more common and obviously accordingly treatment has to be given. The beauty of treatment is that we have a polyvalent ASV. Polyvalent means it, ha it can work uh, uh, for all these four major snakes and hence there is no problem even if it is not a crate and it is a viper, the same would work. The only thing is, as I have again said, it has to be documented that you that there are signs of envenomation.